Welcome to the Bill Walton Show, featuring conversation. And today we're here to talk about trade and China. And with me to do this are two very smart men, Herman Perchner and uh, Riley Walters. Herman is the founder in 1982 of the uh, American Foreign Policy Council. Uh, he has traveled to uh, China annually since 1994. Uh, he's been to Russia more than 65 times. He advises presidents, uh, uh, heads of state all over the world. Interestingly, his, his uh, organization takes donations only from American citizens and U.S. entities. So, welcome. Bill, well, pleasure to be with you. Riley is a policy analyst in, for Asian Economy and Technology at the Heritage Foundation Asian Studies Center. He specializes in Northeast Asian macroeconomic issues as well as emerging technologies and cybersecurity. So I've, I'm late to this game. I've really just become aware of some of these issues. One of the things I've been learning is that uh, if, you, if you look at their education system, yes. they're very oriented to, towards technology. There's STEM degrees, which is what uh, yeah. science, technology, engineering, and math. They're awarding 1.3 million every year, and we're we're at like 300,000. They're very much saying you you want to go to college, you've got to learn something a hard science. If you look at the political bureau, the polar bureau, which is the leading body in China, you'll find they've been disproportionately engineers, and we don't have that in this country. But they have wait wait, wait. their 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 government is primarily engineers, China's as opposed to lawyers. What a, what a committee of the polar. <laughs> Politburo, which maybe yeah. it's seven people now, it's been nine. And if you look at the background of most of the people that have served there over the past couple of decades, I think you find they're engineers. That's fascinating. And uh, that's why, in part, they were able to uh, guide the industrialization because they understood it. Mm. Well, that's a totally different mindset from most of our Western politicians. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm glad you put it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it explains an awful lot, though. It also explains that they uh, think in systems and building. They're not. They're not interested in in, in, in sort of letting a what is a thousand something bloom. They want to instead control outcomes the way engineers do. Yeah. Yes, they they like predictable outcomes. <laughs> Very much. Yeah. Now. Herman, you've, you've been to China every year since 1994. You, I think you know a lot more than you're saying. <laughs> Can you give us an anecdote of something like that where you've seen, uh, uh, I can't, I'm setting you up so you can't go on your next trip. All right. Well, anyway, what we have, we have a, anyway, what we have, we have a, anyway, what we have, we have a few stories. You know, when I first went to China, there were more uh, bicycles and cars in Beijing yeah. and other cities. And the amount of uh, economic progress is jaw-dropping countrywide. Um, and this is how the Communist Party legitimizes its rule. The people, and including party people, worry about corruption. They don't like it. But as long as they're living better and everybody's living better, they give the party a, a lease on life and they think the party has earned the right to continue to govern. But uh, now, with Xi, you have uh, a clamping down, maybe because they're afraid that the freedom has permitted people to go in directions that are not uh, fully under party control. And in their mind, that's akin to chaos. And if you have a country of a billion, 300, maybe 400 million people, to have things out of order is frightening, especially for those that remember the anarchical days of the Cultural Revolution which was a, a nightmare for anybody who went through it. it was, you know, if you go to the best engineering programs in the U.S., you have a disproportionate number of very bright Chinese. Mm -hmm. And the shift I see coming over the next 10, 20 years is the Chinese now are establishing their own higher ed uh, in technology. And uh, they are going to create absolutely world-class engineering programs. And uh, the number of patents, I predict, that are taken... Uh, worldwide uh, by China is going to increase in percent. If we don't do better with uh, educating people in engineering here and mathematics and hard science, it's, it's a long-term problem for us. Um, there was a study some years ago by uh, Morris Rossaby, I think at, at Columbia, talking about how uh, China uh, defeated its enemy at the time, the Mongols, through a trade war. They, were, they, were, they have a uh, millennia of history of dealing with these problems, and to the extent that they're able to use geopolitical uh, means to influence trade, they will do it. It's uh, worked for them in the past, and they, they have, will have confidence it will work in the future. 
troubling, yeah. fascinating. Uh, we've barely scratched the surface. Uh, let's come back and talk some more about this. It's clear, though, that while we're spending all our time worrying about Russians and elections uh, and, uh, and, and actresses, uh, a lot of things are happening we should be paying far more attention to. In this case, it's China. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. There you go. Thanks for listening. Want more? Be sure to subscribe at thebillwaltonshow.com. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Their, their, their government is primarily engineers? China's as opposed to lawyers? What a, what a wonderful... Of a Polish, <laughs> Polish girl, which uh, maybe yeah. it's, it's seven people now. It's been nine. And if you look at the background of most of the people that have served there over the past couple of decades, I think you find they're engineers. That's fascinating. And uh, that's why, in part, they were able to... Uh, guide the industrialization because they understood it.